Hello everybody, my name is Frigid Hyperion, and welcome back to the Wilds of Wildmount campaign. Today we will be starting session 37, and with me today we have, as always, Dawn playing as Sorin, Lily is playing as Windchime, I am playing Moonsick, Rocky is playing Edward, and Kale is playing Brine. And as our dungeon master today, it is the lady who always has a plan for our, fu for our characters' funerals, the lovely Emily. Take it away. <laughs> thank you, thank you very much. Um, uh, please settle down <laughs> with your applause. <laughs> um, um, thank you very much for tuning back in with us. I'm actually going to turn everything over to Brian to give us our session recap. Last time on the Wilds of Wildmount, you. We came in to a one battlefield with every single enemy captured by the Legati company. I really need to turn down the background music. I am so sorry. I got you. Oh, no, it's fine. You can turn it down, I guess, on your end. Yeah. After identifying who the leader was and reviving him to talk a little bit about the futures for these smugglers. We identified that they were not bandits in and of themselves, and that there could perhaps be a world where they did not end up in prison, but were able to use their business to perhaps fund some greater good in the world. With a small discussion that involved us taking a very important cannon. Um, we also gave the ability for the rebels back in Phelan to gain access to weapons for the revolution against the Sylvia family. Continuing on our journey, uh, we headed to... What is the place? Port Zoon. Port Zoon, thank you. We headed to Port Zoon, a steampunk city of incredibly interesting magical items. There, we explored uh, the tavern and their very unique way of serving food. We explored a bookshop and found some very interesting books on uh, exciting topics um, that so intrigued Brian and Edward that uh, they found out that uh, they actually had been written to conceal spells in an arcane grimoire. Lastly, we went to the most interesting shop of the city. A magical item shop full of slightly uh, haywire items and uh, items with negative aspects to balance out their quite powerful effects. After spending quite some time there, we've uh, decided with a uh, growling grappling, uh, grappling hook, which attaches itself to uh, almost any surface, but particularly likes the arms of those who, uh, who are holding it. And that is where we left off, after uh, deciphering the notebook back in the room. Very nice. Very nice. So, now you all find yourself um, in the room uh, that you have rented out once again in Port Zoon. Uh, I believe last time there may have been some uh, discussion about the room um, possibly being used uh, for 
you know, sexual deeds. Sorry. Um, and some conversation with the, uh, uh, with the head lady. Uh, the head lady. The innkeeper. Pardon me. Um, and that's where you find yourself. In a very, very dark room. Hearing the whispered voices of uh, Edward and Brian, who are the ones who imbibed the night mushrooms, the mush true vision mushrooms. We had to bring up my failed attempt at flirting, huh? <laughs> Fun. Ah, uh, nothing. Just an annoying thought. Yeah. Um. I mean, if anything, it is quite a thing. It kind of helps as a deterrent for anyone who might be trying to look in while we're trying to, oh, yeah, I don't know, decipher important journals, or if that is what it is, not just a book of smut that Edward happened to buy for some odd reason. Or, you know, also uh, traveling to Firewatch. I mean, I think it's pretty obvious at this point it's... uh the real deal. I mean, that's quite clearly as well. Hmm. I think that's... I mean, I know you already have this one, but I think... I think that's uh, Catapult right there, right? DM, is that spell Catapult? <laughs> Give me 30 seconds! <laughs> <laughs> Let me just impose my will on this book. Would I there recognize the notation to resemble catapult? Actually, anyway. yes. Uh, go ahead and look <sighs> in your journal tab. Flustered by love. Oh my god, there is catapult in there. I just needed to add it. <laughs> <But> it's <laughs> fine. I'm. I. It, it fit. Oh. I. I guessed a spell that he already had for. Oh, you're yeah. absolutely correct. This is absolutely, without a shadow of a doubt, catapult. I recognize that kinetic uh, energy transference notation anyway. <laughs> it's it's really interesting. I I don't know this. What other spells are in there? I'm I'm Most having of... trouble deciphering them all. Well, most of the spells there are actually surprisingly common for most wizards. I actually possess most of them. Um, out of a list there, there there's got to be at least half the book is already spells that are common enough that most wizards will have it, you know, detect magic, alarm, identify, find familiar. Um, there is some, something... I would like to point out something of note that is um, definitely important is counter the presence of Counterspell and the additional presence of Polymorph being among the being among the spells that are contained within the index of the beginning of the book. I mean, I haven't gotten around to describing the notation, but the index implies that those sp specific spells would be within some of the chapters within that book. Interesting. Counterspell might be useful. Certainly could have uh, helped us in our Sylvia Manor escape. Mm. Not that. <clears throat> Sorry. We're all nerding out a little bit, aren't we? I, actually, I was going to say, you two can do that. Um, Brian, uh, not Brian, Windchime, Soren, do you guys want to go to Firewatch and we can all make some dinner, maybe? It's been a long day already. Yeah. Sounds fun. Okay. okay. Um, that means we need either Brian or Edward to do the honors and let us through. Yeah, sure. Sure. Uh, I'll, I'll start to... Uh, and I, I'm going to use Mage Hand to open up the portal, that way we can keep it open. Um, 
And then I'm going to uh, start digging through the uh, the journal next to uh, Flustered by Love uh, to try and help out with the translation process. Okay. Also, is Nahiri coming with? Yeah. Uh, uh, of course I want to come with. I didn't get to see Firewatch last time. I oh was, my god, you're going to love it. I was uh, busy with other things. <laughs> um, you didn't know that. They actually, uh, you and Nahiri stayed. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, All alone, nobody to disturb them. <laughs> Other things, of With course. With a do not disturb sign on the door. <laughs> <laughs> that was for Brian. <laughs> Specifically, uh, Cheem actually requested it. True. <laughs> okay, give me just a moment. That 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 um... vessel looks incredibly bewildering. Okay. And yet, not a sound was made. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this All right. passage here probably helps with uh, this passage over here. Let me move you all here. Welcome back to, to Firewatch. What are we going to cook? I haven't thought about that. I've, I thought we'd take a look at and see what we have for ingredients and go from there. Here we go. So, making your way back up in from the cellar, um, looking at Firewatch, uh, there has you guys were just here recently, so. Uh, there hasn't been many changes, but, uh, oops. There was one change, uh, Soren's room over here has been added. Ooh. Ooh. Soren's room. Is that the little thingamajig in the side here? Uh, yeah. Um... For you, Don, just so you know, this is completely anything you want to change about it, you just let me know. Um, there's the hammock, the desk that we had talked about briefly, and those bookshelves in that circular position. You've got a little chest for your meager belongings, and there's a pillow on the floor for Freya. Let's go. That's perfect. And then also Let's go. And also a trap door beneath your hammock, you know. Yeah, in case I want to fall down on an entire floor. Let's go. <laughs> Only if you leave it open, in which case, how the hell are you opening it and then also getting into your hammock? Well, magic, uh, I guess. We'll find out. Really short on uh, <laughs> of course. But you won't go uh, get it with that attitude. <laughs> Wind chime, um, mm -hmm. should I say, more specifically, uh, Lily, uh, I will be getting to your room is going to be the next part, so um, that by next session, I'm expecting that to be done. Rocky, yours is going to be after that. Okay. Kind of making my way from, yeah. I don't know. Right to left. Uh, if in the meantime anybody else does have ideas of there's several new spaces that weren't there before now that things are a bit more accurate such as this room over here um, we still are uncertain what's going on with this one and down here is a very very large space um, actually um... I have really messed up this what is going on? I do have an idea for this room over here, actually. Whoops. Sorry, I'm trying to fix. It's okay. Um, potentially, we could have this extra room here as like an infirmary or something. Ah, not that's a good idea. Good. It's the I second like... floor, though. And 
Wouldn't it be kind of hard to get people up there? We don't... I mean, we can carry them. It's not like they're in a wheelchair. And... And, you know, like, even if they were in a wheelchair, like, we did see an example of what they call that, an elevator. Exactly. An elevator? Yeah, like, we could just oh, totally install on those or whatever. We could. It would, it would take a little bit of doing and some engineering, but we could end up doing it. Oh my gosh, dream goals. Oh my god. And then, like, but if that place doesn't work out anyway, it's not like we don't have the storage room on the first floor. That's true as well. Mm, let's see here. What to make for dinner? Nothing tacos. <laughs> tacos. Yeah, like a little like tortilla that we wrap around something like like a mushroom or a fish. Oh my goodness, we can make it so tasty. What's a tortilla? It's like bread, but it's made out of corn usually, but it could be made out of flour. Who are you talking to? <laughs> I mean, the group is talking about dinner. You're not there. <laughs> Rocky's here with me! <laughs> what? We're That's deciphering not. the books together! Oh, oh I forgot about that. Wait, 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 hold on. Let, let Lily say it. Oh my let god, let Lily so say many it. fucking weird questions about this. I, uh, you know what, never mind. I'll, those are questions. Lily, Lily, mind. say it again. I hear my friends in my head sometimes. Oh my god, that's right! You still have that, don't you? Sorry. <laughs> I was talking to Edward, guys. He 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 was like sometimes I don't know. And Brian just like the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> what? what? The, there's no tea in this chapter. What the hell, man? <laughs> oh god. Uh, I'm canon. Anytime someone forgets that I'm supposed to be there, it's just wind time here. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I love that so much. Oh god. We have such a fucked up canon. It's not even funny. It's great. <laughs> Look, she just got no, just uh, a literal canon. Look, the after effects of the drugs funny. are just some real special shit. Remember, it kids, is just some oh, real special shit. Drugs drugs. And you'll be able to talk to your friends inside of their head. Mm -hmm. Winners do drugs. <laughs> and my drugs left me with split personalities. And it makes the world come together. Boy, it's a good thing I, mark, really... uh, I mark my YouTube videos as not safe for kids. It's actually quite funny that Soren's with split personalities and he's now holding other souls inside of him. <laughs> just saying I'm brilliant. <laughs> oh, yeah, you can't even pretend like you don't have split personality. That's how split personality All right, works. all right. We're we're getting we're getting off topic from our two split topics as it is. So, um, beginning this adventure and trying to cook uh, tortillas. Um, do you had, do you have any experience with tortillas? Like actually, or are you just like familiar with them? Uh, one check. I think maybe she has had them once in her life. <laughs> she has had them once okay yeah so like while traveling you know it was it, somebody somebody had some tortillas packed while you know in their camp or whatever and uh uh so you're you're you know what they are but as for how to make them you don't really um you were just know the little bits and pieces that you were told um so if you're gonna try to make these i'm going to need a check What check are you going to use? Uh, let me think for a second. A check with money. Uh. <laughs> hey kids, <laughs> want to do something you think your DM won't let you do? Bribe them! <laughs> um, my favorite pastime. 
bribing. The DM. Oh, is that uh, what you thought I said? Oh, wait. We're not getting anything done this session. I'm gonna use. Can I use like insight to just go into my memory and really remember the consistency of it and like what it was made out of and talking to that person so, who had the tortilla. So insight is more like empathizing with others, reading their body language, seeing where they're coming mm. from. Not so much like hard like memory. If you know something, you know something, right? Yeah. Um, I would let you do like a survival, which is an intelligence check, right? I believe. Survival mm -hmm. wisdom. Wisdom. Wisdom, the nature. Uh, nature I would go with history. a wisdom check. Uh... <laughs> A not really a history because that's like I mean, studying just me like roll straight intelligence. Um, wisdom or intelligence. Well, yes, yes, I would give you I would, I would let you do survival if you wanted. Uh, I think there, survival works. Yeah. I'm doing wisdom. I think you have proficiency in survival, don't you? Whoa, with a twenty one, that's a save. Let me just double check that real quick. Because there is a difference between a save and yeah, she does have proficiency to wisdom. Right. Let me open up her character sheet. Wait, what's it the should still be pretty high. So, a saving throw, you see how there's those blue check marks next to it? That means that you have proficiency. So, it's whatever that is, plus three, because you have a three proficiency bonus. Oh. So, it's your your modifier, right? Which is on mm -hmm. the left, it's that those... Uh, those big numbers, right? Plus your proficiency for three. So, for example, your wisdom save, you've got a plus three wisdom and a three proficiency bonus giving you a plus six. So, if we wanted to go straight uh, wisdom save, um, but I would like to say you do have survival proficiency. Mm -hmm. So, all the way at the bottom. So, that gives you, instead of having a plus three, a plus six. Mm -hmm. So... We're gonna still keep that 21 because I did ask for that survival and you didn't quite get that. But I'll let you keep the 21 regardless uh, because it's still plus six. Does that okay. make sense? Yeah. So the only reason you would roll a straight roll is and that I asked for would be if you don't have a proficiency in that specific topic. And really the best thing you can do is just pick one from one of the skills. Okay. Um, all of that being said, you uh, you use your combination of uh, the the memories that you have from eating and watching the tortilla being made, and a little bit of um, know how um, and for guessing for how to how to make the consistency right and for how thick to press it and for how long uh to uh, to to cook it um yeah. but before long you have a, a a large stack of uh uh of tortillas that progressively got better with each time that you did it um and i would say with that all this practice for making all these tortillas, you definitely know how to make tortillas without a say without a uh, roll in the future. Nice, nice. Tortilla is delicious. Mhm. Mm now we gotta put stuff in it for tacos. I can cook the fish. We can put a tortilla. I can start cutting vegetables. <laughs> what are you talking about with the tortillas again? This isn't even like they're not even that eating. <laughs> This is the um, sex scene! <laughs> <laughs> um, I can start, like, grating the cheese or whatever. <laughs> cheese would be good, right? We've got plenty. Sounds good. Um, and thus everyone begins cooking. Um... Go ahead and roll me, roll me whatever you're applying to the skill to really do this properly. What is what is Soren doing for prep? Cutting vegetables. Fair enough. Uh, 
I'll make the roll after a little bit of flavor. Um, Moonzik's gonna cook the fish in a little bit of butter, a lot, um, along with some lemon juice, a little bit of dill, and some pepper. And he'll, and he'll um, I don't know if I. Yeah, that's a little bit of flavor, man. Yeah. Oh, he's Sorry. leave him alone. Oh, I, I, think I thought delicious. it was funny. No, 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 no. I thought it was funny that he said after adding this, there's a little bit of flavor, and then he talks I, that about was not all intentional, this. Seasoning. But I'll take it anyway. It was funny. It was. It was. Now that I realize. Um. Uh, yeah, that's pretty good. But after all that, um, hoping I do it all right. Hopefully, I don't add too much of anything. I'm like, I'm not gonna go for any one specific, like one of my best stats because it, it doesn't make any sense. I'm gonna go with survival. Okay. I still think it makes sense that way. So. Survival. Yeah. Yeah, and you um, maybe maybe it's just the the smell of fresh baked uh, baked tortillas um, and uh, the comforting of the comforting it being as comfortable as it is in this familiar environment but you make really solid fish i hope it's not solid <laughs> i mean oh like... my teeth it 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 you <laughs> give it a little bit of a taste and damn yeah it tastes pretty fucking good um soren Dicing up the vegetables and whatnot, uh, trying to be as efficient with your time and uh, making them all the proper size. Um, pretty low DC, uh, but go ahead and roll me something. Survival, nature, whatever. Acrobatics, I would say, doesn't fit. Doesn't but fit? Like, lighting the knife over the cutting board? You don't I'd probably go with sleight of, uh, of hand. Sleight of hand for that? Acrobatics is is more uh, flip with of, your dice. So, sleight of hand then? Yeah, sleight of hand. Could I it's the same I wouldn't fine. be able to wager the same number would yeah. I? Because yeah, they're both it, a plus three. If they're plus three, yeah, that's fine. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. Okay. You rolled a you rolled a seventeen. That's true. All, um, I'm, all I'm imagining is Soren doing a flip with his knife. Yes. <laughs> Um, no, I throw the knife into the air and let it chop itself. Does the flip what vegetables the do you chop ah, yeah, up fun. for these fish tacos? Um, I'm gonna say lettuce. Let's see, lettuce, some onion, uh, cilantro, um, the pre-cooked dill, um, just some other spices, probably like some garlic. Just prepping everything that others yeah. need and yourself and um yeah you you have uh successfully uh and quite easily chopped up uh all of the vegetables you think would go really well uh with the um with these fish tacos um and uh you see, uh, Nahiri spends, like, probably all of two minutes grating cheese before she begins, uh, uh, setting down plates, uh, for everybody, um, and getting the table ready. What kind of cheese did she grate? Oh, it's, uh, Great yeah, it's absolutely, uh, a, uh, Mary Well. M M M M M M uh, bellwether, uh, cheese. Uh, it, I don't know enough about cheeses to know what would pair well with it, uh, but, you know, it's not that much. This is mostly, it's not like cheese is the most important thing in this district. <laughs> uh, um. True. I'm always just curious, though. Um... Yeah, I don't, I don't know enough about cheeses to know what kind. Okay. But something that pairs well. Um, and and uh, in short order, it's dinner time. 
And it's just at this moment that uh, Janor and Barrett uh, uh, come around the corner um, into the kitchen area. Um, oh, hi, guys. Glad to see you back again today. Oh, you made dinner. Yeah. That smells really good. What are these? Oh. Plate? Oh, it's bendable. She picks up a tortilla. <laughs> edible plates, actually. Uh, Barrett comes up, grabs one, and takes a solid bite out of it. Oh, but they're, he... they're not done yet. They're... <laughs> oh. <laughs> they're gonna be the, um... They're tacos. We put stuff inside them, and then we eat them. So, yeah. The, the table's set. We're almost ready for dinner. Do you want some? Um, yeah, but... Where are you gonna fit? I mean, this is these are pretty thin. There's not much space inside. You just you kind of fold fold them over, and like Windchime is like showing with her hands like how to eat a taco. <laughs> oh well, can't wait to try it. it smells great. Um, as. <laughs> The table finishes getting set, and everybody takes their places. Of course, at this point in time, um, I would say it's probably you, Windchime, who notices that uh, you're kind of lacking the presence of uh, two nerds. <laughs> Edward and Brian? Mm -hmm. They're not here to enjoy this wonderful meal. Mm, should we bring them here? Should we bring them tacos? I was going to actually bring them some tacos. Those, n those uh, bookworms have got to have something to eat if they're going to continue their studies. Mm -hmm. Can they come here and we can just leave the portal open? Oh. Is that... No, nope. We, we've tried that before yeah. because um, even though it's a mage hand, it's Brian's mage hand and that means that she can't step through. Okay. Yeah, so we should we should definitely uh, prepare some tacos and bring them to them. I'll prepare them and take them down. Okay. Moonzik will prepare four tacos and put them on a plate, and then somehow he'll climb down the ladder uh, with one hand on the ladder and then the other hand like holding onto the plate as he climbs down. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you you do do that, and make your way th through the door. Who's hungry? It's very dark in this room. In, in the going? hotel room? Yeah, yeah. There's no lights on in the hotel room. Because we had the, uh, we had the, uh, mushrooms, right? right. We have light yep. sensitivity right now. And that's how you guys are getting a true sight to read it. Yeah. Right, so I can't see anything very well. Oh, wait, hang on. Yes, I can. He's gonna grip on to ghost eye. <laughs> there we go. Much better. How are you two doing? I keep saying this, but I'll never get used to your pupils doing the things that they do whenever you have that thing. Really? I can't really see them all that well. Through sight and all, uh, colors don't really come through that well for me. Well, it's basically... It looks like my entire eyeball is white. Really yeah, no, I've seen it in the light before. I'm just... Anyway, you brought food, and I... they're in tortillas. How the fuck did you know? <laughs> Wait, what? He's been muttering about tortillas this entire time, when we've been looking through completely unrelated passages. The entire time, I made like one offer, bro. Three. <laughs> it was really weird. I'm, I'm genuinely uh, flabbergasted as to how he knew. Well, regardless, I did bring food. I brought a, I brought you each a couple of tacos. Thank uh, you so much. Tortilla shells, and then uh, that winch I made. I prepared the fish. Uh, Soren chopped up the vegetables, and Nahiri grated the cheese. 
So a whole collaboration event, huh? Absolutely. Well, thank everyone for me. We will. I'm sure this will be delicious. Do you need anything from over here? Not that I can think of at the moment. Hmm. No, I can't think of anything. Edward? Yes? Uh, do you want to take a break and go eat with them? I can hold down the fort here, I don't mind. Yeah, taking a break wouldn't hurt. Alright. Well, come on through. I'm sure Janor and Bear would be delighted to see you. Alright, uh... How long before these mushrooms wear off? Um, let me open it up. Is it? There it is, magic items. I'm just blind. <laughs> oh, you might like the opposite of blind. It's like supervision, True. except you get to babysit invisible things. I actually don't see it in the magic items, and I'm concerned. Is it like I think I have a... Hold on, I might have a, a page that has it. Isn't it the Ola's Vertanus mushrooms? It is. I think I might have have it in here. Yes. No, I don't. Fuck. Wait. No, I don't have it there. Maybe it's here? I thought <laughs> should have them written down. Because that was before I started keeping the... Also, I've got uh, it. Also, Windjime is in miscellaneous. Oh, oh, wow. Um, it's one minute. Oh, okay. Oh. Well, that. Well, cool. I thought it was an hour. I mean, what's good? Well, regardless, I'm just gonna let you. I'm just gonna say, uh, yeah. The uh, conveniently, you notice your vision start to. To, to spit and sputter like uh, it's out of gasoline um, as uh, the uh, it's been about an hour they've been cooking this whole time um, as uh, the mushrooms wear off uh, now that being said um, given that you have read the book and the journal, uh, in combination with the, uh, the spell list, uh, you no longer need the, the mushrooms to, to be able to understand what's happening here. I'll just say that. Kind of hand wave over it. Well, I mean, I don't know about you, but I'm pretty hungry. Do you think we should go join Barrett and Janor and the others on Firewatch? One of us has to stay here, right? I was just offering you to go ahead. How about um, you guys I was take the thinking... plate? How about you guys take the plate back? I'll keep a couple of the tacos, and I'll let you guys come through. Uh, go through. That sounds I've already, like a I've already made my offer. Go enjoy dinner. You go enjoy dinner. You haven't seen them all day. Well, um, I'm just going to stay out of this argument and. uh... Go, go, adjourn myself with dinner. <laughs> I, I'm going to walk through the portal. Plate in hand? <laughs> yep, plate in so hand. We're all going to have an odd shift out. Go right hard. now, I have... Uh, right now, I have a interesting book to read and uh, some more work to do on deciphering this or helping... Uh, Edward Dicey for this. Right. Realistically, it's taken a lot of the fun out of figuring out the mystery in the actual f novel. I'd like to finish it. Go. Enjoy. I... Okay. She's staring daggers at him. <laughs> <laughs> I, st 
still have no idea what you two are on about with this book, but all right. And he'll go back through the portal, begrudgingly so. Grudge? Did somebody say grudge? No. <laughs> All right. He climbs back up the ladder and walks through the kitchen and into the dining room. Did you do you know that Brian is in, is incredibly stubborn? <laughs> I mean, I feel like she had her feet planted the moment she had the rose planted too. Um, I've so when she wants something, she doesn't stop. And then I'm going to eye towards the kid <laughs> in the <laughs> face that we teleported to. <laughs> I did say that I walked through the kitchen first. Are you meaning to say that the cannon is in the fucking dining room? I mean, when she has her eyes on something, yeah. she generally doesn't leave without it. I know, I know, I know. Yeah, that's true. But then again, the things that she's been stubborn on have greatly helped our party, so I guess I can't complain. As you uh, continue your walk, uh, <laughs> I guess, uh, you will find your place at the table. Um, everybody is uh, is digging in, and uh, you say uh, even... Uh, uh, you see, as you guys come in to sit down, Barrett kind of stands up from, uh, from his chair, uh, half-eaten uh, taco on his plate, mouth still chewing. Um... Um, he, uh, kind of holds a finger up and, uh, uh, walks out the door. What was that about? I'm not really quite sure. Janor, do you know what's going on? Um, no. But, I mean, if I were to say... I don't know. He seemed... He seemed sudden. Hey, Lily, roll me an insight check. And Soren, for that matter. Windchime and Soren. Bonk. 23. Bonk. 23. Wait, what? Insight. 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 Yeah, um, Lily, uh, excuse me, Windchime, uh, wherever he was going off to, he was clearly in a rush and it happened suddenly. Maybe he has to go to the bathroom okay. really bad. Um, <laughs> but you... <laughs> Soren, you notice that, yeah, it looks like the way he kind of shot up suddenly and put his finger out, it wasn't that he had to go to the bathroom or anything. It was that he remembered something. Probably gonna go grab something. I, um, shimmy up from the table and follow him. Sure. Are you doing so sneakily? Sure. So you see that uh, he is making his way out the front door. Uh, but roll me a uh, as as he goes to shut the door behind him. Roll me a stealth check. Okay. Um. Since you're doing it uh, yeah. Um. You, uh, let me just do this real quick. That's not very stealth of you. That's okay. Um, as he is clearly very focused on wherever he is going, um, as you open the door, uh, just as he, you open, uh, the foyer door, just as he opens the front door, uh, and doesn't seem to notice your presence, um, that's wild. Uh, he makes a uh, sharp right. He's kind of jogging. 
I just want to okay. when Chime thinks now that everybody's leaving for the bathroom and that uh, maybe they got food poisoning. Oh no! <laughs> Uh, that's funny. Was the fish that bad? <laughs> oh no, Brian. Wait. Actually, is anybody else feeling like they have to go to the bathroom? <laughs> I just want to make sure. We only have one toilet, guys. <laughs> <laughs> um, as... <laughs> As uh, Barrett comes to the end of the uh, uh, the corner of, of Firewatch, uh, he turns once again and seems to be, as you continue to follow him, um, headed into his little brewing station. Huh. Interesting. Uh, in, in his little brewing station? Wait, where is that? We're over here. That's over there. Uh, I'd like to peek in. Um, you, uh, we're still doing it stealthily, right? Uh, yes, please. Okay, I need another stealth check, because this is another opportunity for him to see you. Uh, what do Nah, that's better. That is better. Um, you, uh... You begin to uh, to to sneak up to the door uh, as it uh, as it swings open. Luckily, he seems to have left it uh, uh, seems to have left it open um, in his in his hurry. Um, you can see him uh, very quickly grabbing uh, something right off the table. Um, it looks to be a bottle of wine. Um, and just as he turns around, you uh, quickly skirt around the edge of the building um, and kind of hide yourself in the corner um, as he uh, begins to um, to run off this way without even seeing your presence. Running back towards the house? Yep. Certain's going to have like a very confused expression plastered on his face. It's gonna give uh, Freya a little like look and then follow back behind them. Okay. Um, in short order, just after you know, uh, forty-five seconds to a minute, uh, you see the lot of you uh, without Soren, uh, C and Brian. <laughs> uh, see uh, Barrett come back into the room um, with. Addendum two bottles of wine um, in hand uh, with a big smile on his face. Um, and they glancing at the labels uh, that he has very explicitly turned out to you. Um, you see a little label that says nothing fancy, but uh, um, the Legati Company, Assassin Berry line, sponsored by uh, uh, Bell Weathers Wines and Fine uh, Artisanal Wines and Fees. Ooh. Ooh. And he says, uh, This is our first official batch. Well, I'm, ex I'm excited. Um, as uh, he sets down. Uh, Sets down the the bottles, uh, and him and uh, Nikiri uh, grab uh, wine glasses from the uh, uh, the cabinets to sit down. At that this point in time, that's so and you walk right back in. It was just a few moments. Ah, there you are. Oh yeah, sorry, I had to go to the bathroom. Are, are you give, like, a slight smile. Yeah, no, nothing to do with the tacos. Just oh, had to go. Uh, and he's gonna have like a slight smirk on his face. <laughs> Another thing that um, we needed to tell you is that uh, we were in the 
we're, uh, we're in business with someone who makes wines and cheeses. We were talking about the bellwether cheeses earlier. Oh. Uh, the man also happens to make wine, and we have uh, some assassin berry vines actually at the bottom of the tower on the floor tier. And that's where, uh, in using the fruit that they have, we make the wine. From them. Well. Well. We, uh, we made a single batch so far. <laughs> oh. We actually haven't had a chance to try it yet. Hence why, now that most of y'all are here. Well then, what are we waiting for? Um, and with that, pops open the wine, and uh, everybody seems to be getting their glasses. Should we save a glass for Brian? I'm sure she would probably want to have a taste of this as well. Knowing it com it's coming from Bellwether, uh, or knowing that's going to be our uh, fruits of labor, <laughs> she's more than likely going to want a glass. Um, don't worry, don't worry. There's plenty more where this came from. I'll have to send you guys back with some. Really? Oh, that would be wonderful. Not there's not a ton, but there's enough. I mean, we could start promoting it as well. That's not a bad idea. That's but true. we should probably taste it first. I'm gonna take a sip. It's interesting. Um, yes, I would say it is. It is an interesting wine. Um, it's it's actually very sweet, um, much sweeter than you would expect. With this hint of uh, of this peppery, uh, this 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 hint of pepper. It's sweet and pepper and. Uh, surprisingly pretty pretty decent it's not the greatest wine in the entire world but um you know it's interesting it kind of is wet in your mouth like uh uh like it sticks to your mouth but it's very wet makes your mouth kind of water a bit Gene will take a sip, and he says, Definitely not what I would have expected, but I like I it anyway. I, it's good. And we are making it with assassin berries and not uh, the typical grapes, so. Just thinking, I, I did hear a rumor, or at least the general consensus, that the more bodies an assassin berry consumes, the the better the fruit. I was thinking if we, you know, bought a goat periodically and fed it to the plants, would that be... Well, we don't want it to be living animals. Well, of course not, but you know what I mean. Right. <laughs> you know, we feed it a goat every now and then. I bet you it would really like bodies. Like, human bodies. <laughs> I'm just saying, yeah, it's true. if we ever come across, like, a graveyard, I don't know. Don't I could be down for some grave digging. I was, going to ask I, if had, I was going to ask if he had a knack for uh, botany, but um, that doesn't appear to be the case. What, me? I think if anyone here would have a, 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 a affinity for botany, it would be um, Thorin over there. True. He's gonna give a peace sign. Most druids do. <laughs> do you, uh, excuse me, do you like working with plants, uh, Soren? Janora says to you. 
Yeah, I I don't mind working with plants. I'm I'm not the best at it right now, but who says it can't be improved? Hmm. I was just wondering, like, because we could totally use some. Wow, sorry, <laughs> sorry, Nahiri. Um, I. <laughs> Um, cause we could probably use somebody who's like good with plants to, to help with the assassin berries. I mean, we have an amulet that, uh, that we've been working on, but, uh, with, it's not always, um, the most effective though. You see, she kind of like rubs her the back of her neck. Thing is feisty. I can always give it a whack sometime. Um, wouldn't that... Maybe it's worth a try. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know anything about plants. <laughs> These plants, I definitely would not give a whack. They, uh... Might mistake you for intruders. Gonna grab the bridge of his nose. <laughs> I didn't mean it that way, but... Sure. Anyway. This is really good. I feel like the wine pairs so nicely with it. It's like something about the, the fish, the meat. It's so good. Yes. It does taste very Solid. And actually, that as you all continue quickly. to eat, you <laughs> notice that with the wine, the, the meat tastes really, really good. Like, particularly the fish. That's Much really better than it did before. Hmm. <laughs> I, I want to roll a medicine check to see if it's just from us drinking alcohol that things are improving. Or if it's actually, like, some kind of effect of the assassin berries that kind of, like, improve, like, kind of, like, bring out the... Good question. Go ahead and, uh, uh, roll a medicine check. Sixteen. You think, I mean, there's a good chance that it's just the alcohol and your really good cooking skills. Um, but, um... It's not that it couldn't happen. I mean, you know that the that the plant is um, the plant is carnivorous. Um, so why wouldn't that transfer over? I mean, there's so many other magical things in this world that have similar effects. Hmm. Think of like the Periton heart. Interesting. I'm not sure if this isn't from result of just you know. And, uh, from the alcohol, uh, we, like, our perception of things seem to improve, or perhaps these berries have something to do with, I don't know, they're carnivorous. Does that transfer over, do you think, Edward? Or Soren? Or either, I guess. I mean, I admit, um, biology and nature isn't my particular specialty. Um, I'm not really quite sure of that answer. Can I roll a nature check, DM? You can roll a nature, or if you want to try rolling Arcana to see if, like, there's some magic possibilities, that works. 26. With Holy a shit, 26. The Arcana roll of this campaign. Yeah. With a, with a 26, you are, like, actually pretty certain that it's possible whether or not they actually imbue that kind of low level magic you definitely know that uh eating um eating things um that eat things that well eating things that have this base level of the uh of, of magic running through them um is it's quite possible you have the experience with it with the periton heart um, you do know that the, uh, uh, that 
the assassin berry, like you used uh, like a long time ago, uh, maybe in one of your down times, maybe during the actual battle, you did end up casting at some point in time, uh, detect magic, as you walked your way around the uh, the entire premises, um, and it definitely felt like. There was, it's not like the Sassin Berries rejected the magical energy of the world. Uh, it wasn't any more magical than, you know, the grass or the trees, but there is an innate, like, flow of magic um, that, that runs through basically everything. Except for Soren. Except for Soren? Rude. But accurate. Um. Well, I think, personally, um, I mean, I'm, I don't know much about plants, but I know that, generally speaking, um, you know, you know, in, in my study of Arcana, um, organic material, especially ones that are living, generally have a sort of affinity for being more receptive and absorbent of arcane energies that are dispersed around the world. That mostly explains the discrepancy of you know, the concentration of magics being disproportionately skewed towards especially entities of larger and higher powers. Um, even their mere presence causes energy to gather up and pool up and saturate in specific areas. That kind of explains why certain powerful monsters have layers that are distorted to sort of an image of their presence. I think the assassin berry plants sort of reflect that on a very tiny micro scale, if that made any sense. I'm gonna be honest, no, not a lick of it. You lost me somewhere, but I can't remember the word that you said where you lost me. Fair enough. But I'm going to assume that you know what you're talking about and it sounds like maybe the plants carnivorousness carried over. I, I think that's what you said. Mm, close enough. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Huh. Soren, would you like to try your hand at this? Um, you don't have to, but if you want to. Sure. He'll take a whack at it. Uh, he's gonna do it a different approach, though. It's not the best, but, uh... Yikes, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, not the best, but we'll go yeah. with it, I guess. So, you, you think about it, and based off of what, uh... Edward was saying, and what uh, conclusions that Munzik came to, um, you're suddenly very worried. Actually, very worried. What if, like, if it makes you like me, what if it turns you into cannibals? <laughs> <laughs> He's gonna get a little panicked. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> He's gonna get a little panicked. <laughs> He's not gonna say anything though, but he's gonna he's gonna get a little panic. Take it as somehow Soren knows that Edward can't sense magic on him. From that panic. He's gonna Soren just as starts... if like Edward has caught on to something that's taboo and that he's not supposed to know about Soren. Soren just breaks out in a cold sweat. He's gonna <laughs> he's gonna put the, the glass of wine down and push it away from him a little bit. Um Windshine, with your passive perception. You yeah. notice that he looks really worried, particularly hesitant at that one. Soren, are you okay? Do you do you need like a cup of tea or something? Water? Yeah, you're gonna see him swallow, <laughs> like very vividly swallow. No, no, yeah, no. I'm, I'm, I'm fine. You, I mean, you guys should enjoy the wine, though. <laughs> um, would you like some more fish? <laughs> no, no, you guys got it. I'm, I'm full. He's gonna kind of <laughs> push his plate away as well. <laughs> Whatever, more for me, I guess. She digs in with a big old, uh, like taco that's just completely filled with fish. 
gonna just stare at her with the cold sweat ensuing. <laughs> Big bite. <laughs> Man, these tacos are really good. I really hope they're enjoying their meal up there. <laughs> you know, maybe I should uh, go go say hi to Brian. I don't know if she likes eating by herself. Take a glass of wine with you. For her, of course. Some, I'm sure she'd love to have some. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Um, grab a, he, a glass of <laughs> When he's handed that wine, he's gonna hold it as far away from himself as possible. <laughs> like he everyone's gonna watch him walk out that out the uh the, the door, it, holding just it holding it here. in front of him as far away as possible. And his head's like pushed back as well. You know, you're kind of holding it weird. Careful, don't spill it. <laughs> I think I think Soren might be feeling weird. Guys. I mean, now that he's gone, I do think I know why he's feeling weird. Um, in that entire lecture, that I'm not really sure how much of it he understood, but I think he had enough literacy, uh, arcane literacy, to understand that I'm able to detect presence of magic around the world, as most mages do, and I think he might know that. For some reason, there was always something about him where I couldn't really sense magic from him. I can sense magic on him if he were to cast spells on himself. But never from him, as if it wasn't a source that he emanated. And like I said, all sort of living things have a propensity to do so, but he just doesn't. So he doesn't have um, magic flowing through him. What does that matter? But, I mean, well, like, from the way you were carrying is... the wine, it looked like it had something more to do with the wine than whatever you, you're you talking about. I don't know. I mean, it all started when I was talking about that conversation. He got really nervous directly after that. I'm assuming it's probably because of something I said or something that I sort of let on to him knowing. But in either case, it's more like he's there's no magic from him you know uh it's not really every single living thing it doesn't matter if it's you or me even if you're incapable of casting magic there's still sort of some you know accumulation of it from living things right i would sort of pick it up from things like you know birds or animals or even insects who have the slightest faintest trace but something from Soren, I, I get nothing. So what does all this have to do with him carrying the wine, funny? I don't know. He's generally unpredictable and weird and eccentric. I mean, most of us are the eccentric types. <laughs> yeah, fair point. Hi, Soren. Oh, hey. I brought you some... Wine. He's gonna kind of shimmy it to her as fast as possible. <laughs> Not spilling any, of course. With it? No, no, no. Just Sorry. I had a little too much. Um. <laughs> uh. What's your passive perception? Perception. Or in insight. Excuse me. Insight. My passive insight. Or roll. Is or if you're zero. if you're suspicious, if you're suspicious, you can roll for it too. I'm normally not very insightful, but like realistically, I know, um, I know Soren. I'm rolling insight. With that, yeah, Before. you can tell that there is something wrong with this wine. <laughs> <laughs> I swear to God, if you poison me, hey, hey, I had some dead. of it too. I'm not dead yet. I, yes. I think. Um, he, Wait, he said, yes. your, your insight is absolutely telling you that there is, there is, he is convinced that this wine is going to poison us all. <laughs> what happened? Just Edward, Edward happened. 
He starts going off on something about the assassin berries. Oh, by the way, this is assassin berry wine from your plants, I guess. Oh, anyway. The assassin berries, um, yeah. He starts going off about how, I don't know, they might make us cannibals or something. I, that's, I don't, I don't know, but uh, here you go. <laughs> I... Drink it at your own, I guess. I... Highly doubt that. There was assassin berry wine made before we came there, and the monks didn't thought it become cannibals. He's gonna he's gonna look at uh, Brian very expect expectantly. Uh, she's she's gonna continue. Go ahead, if you would like. You could also do an Arcana check. I would love to. <laughs> Roll the nat twenty. Roll the nat twenty. I do have proficiency. You, you know what? 18 it's is very really tiny. It's certainly possible that uh, a uh, magical effect um, <laughs> such as, you know, um, cannibalism <laughs> could be spread. It, it, it's certainly possible. Unlikely, but you do have the experience with the Periton. Uh, uh, with the Periton heart to know that magical effects are passed through things that you consume. Um, it's you know what can you, fix the answer but it, to the it, problem. You know, it, it's kind of like possible. <laughs> you know what can fix the answer to this question? It's it's identify. Yep, I don't have it's it. Identify. It's um, Brian's Brian's just gonna take a second. It's really unlikely. Like, magical effects, transference, all of that, but, like, why would it specifically make you cannibals? That makes very little sense. Like, the monks I, didn't I, become cannibals, the assassin berries don't eat each other, they just eat meat. Might make you really like meat, though. Like, really like meat. You're a vegetarian. Do not drink this wine. <laughs> <laughs> While talking to Soren. You can drink that at your own discretion. However, I'm going to stay over here. He's, uh, he's going to take a step. <laughs> you put in more of those tacos, by the way? She's sipping the wine. Oh, this is very sweet. <laughs> Sorry, wait, what did she say? Did you bring more of those tacos, by the way? No, but I can go grab you more if you'd like. I would love some more. He's gonna, he's gonna go back. <laughs> he's little little errand boy. Br Bride has <laughs> a wicked grin on her face as she uh, sips more of the wine than... Um, She's going to pour it into a different container and just leave the glass out. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, and she's going to take some of the red wine and she's going to, like, drip it down the sides of each of her mouth. Yeah, of each <laughs> side of her mouth. Okay. No, okay. No. That's so obnoxious. I love it. Um, as... Back to while wow, that's all happening, conversation at the table. <laughs> I don't know. Probably Cheem and Edward arguing about something that's completely pointless. And uh, like I said, I, like how would we even logistically use a cannon if it's in a basement? It's not even pointed at anything. It's no. pointed at the wall. We we're just going to this blow before, up Edward. Walls. We were going to reduce it and then carry it upstairs. It's not like there will be invaders coming into the island. It, it's not like we're being besieged by zombies on a nightly basis where we would need one, though. No, but it helps be prepared. We can make quite a bit of enemies if we're not careful enough. Yeah, but we can also appear threatening if we just have a giant cannon mounted onto our ceiling. Onto us how? <laughs> mounted onto our roof. That Wasn't that the entire point of what we're doing? I mean, wouldn't that give the wrong impression to, like, merchants and traders alike when they see something more akin to a sort of a, you know, a, a military outpost? Wait, why the roof? Isn't the roof sloped? How the hell are we going to keep the cannon on the roof if it's sloped? 
don't know. Where else are we going to mount it? I, I mean, the know. archer is large enough in order to give a proper I, uh, field you of view. You walk in, and, and you actually have the answer to this question as you hear it. Um, the uh, the way that the roof is designed, genuinely, is that there is this like top balcony part, um, and then the four slopes come down from it. Um, I don't have. Give me a second here. I can actually pull and it this up. This was originally a garrison, so I would think it would like be logistically suitable and designed to have cannons or other artillery pieces mounted on the ceiling and roof. On the ceiling. Um, <laughs> Not the ceiling. Oh, the it's roof. hanging upside down. Hey, yo. <laughs> yeah, just glue the cannon onto the Shit, I mean, <laughs> if we put in a cannon in the observatory, I'm riding that thing like a horse. Um, Hold up. We're gonna put it on our ship. <laughs> I kind of thought so, too. Yeah. Let me... <laughs> Actually, show somebody, it to you. Somebody fucking put that in the shower, Thoughts. If we're putting a cannon into the observatory, I'm going to ride it like a horse. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Barrel. Who wouldn't, like, sit on the barrel, though? Like, who wouldn't sit on the barrel of a cannon? <laughs> Ooh. Or I could use it to get closer to the star. God. Do any of you know how to fire it? Huh. So this is not the most, uh accurate yet it needs to be a little bit adjusted slightly but as you can see this uh this top part here um is actually flush with the the top corner of the roof so there is this point where um a flat surface that is above everything else okay does that make sense Hell yeah. So That's you could put a cannon up there. Cameron, this is your fault for making me argue about useless things. I mean, we're just doing something that's akin to our characters. Yeah. Ed Edward, <laughs> Jim, Ed uh, Mundic is is known to bicker about pointless things. <laughs> as as we bickered about the shit room, the cannon on top of the roof, X Y Z. Pretend like you're X Y Z. Oh. Well. Also, I quoted Chower Thoughts. <laughs> um. Well, you can actually have the cannon on the roof. It, there is a flat space up there. It was meant to be for the observatory, but I mean, if we want to put a cannon up there, I could make space. We want to put a cannon up there over an observatory is a ridiculous question I never thought I'd have to say no to. <laughs> I I think I would rather have the observatory as well. Exactly. Um, why not both? That's, yeah. Can make a taco reference. <laughs> I mean, wouldn't the presence of storing, you know, gunpowder and also, you know, having cannons that would fire potentially <laughs> damage the fragile and oh. sensitive equipment that would come with putting observatory equipment there? That is a fair point. I don't know if it's a good idea to leave me with a cannon, but shoot, I'll buy it. <laughs> I mean, if we wake up in the middle of the night from cannon fire, we know who is responsible. Hey, whoa, the other whoa. option, you could put it on the bell tower. Gives you a full 360 view. <laughs> but it's pretty f high up. It'd be really hard to get an entire cannon up there, Janor is saying. I mean, I can levitate it up. The getting up there is not the problem. I can levitate it up. Only, Magic solves virtually every problem. The only problem I would have with having a cannon up there is that at some point it's going to be impossible to aim the cannon downwards or whatever you're trying to blast away. Yes, I would agree. The effective range would ev eventually deter as they approach the island, and I don't think that it would be effective for deterring intruders by the time they've already set foot on land. Wouldn't that be the same issue on the roof? Not I mean, the roof has an angle of depression that would allow for the cannon to be pointed downwards on a diagonal slant. 
You realize that this building is two stories tall, and then there's a roof, right? But wasn't there like a diagonal slant downwards with an angle? I mean, direction? yes, but it's still two stories tall. Fair enough, but that would still give really us a lot of... really want to be part of this range. conversation. Then again, I do remember Brian saying something about putting it on the Wave Chaser as well. I think the Wave Chaser would be a much more suitable location designation for this cannon. And it probably. <laughs> oh! Oh, that reminds me, Janor says. Um, the, um... Uh... The, uh, the, the wave chaser, I got, uh, a letter from, uh, uh, my brain is slow. I, I got a letter from the Jarkle, um, just, uh, just, like, earlier today. Um, apparently they're gonna be swinging by Broken Bank. Like, tomorrow. Oh. We wanna drop by and, uh, send them our regards. And also a cannon. So, if you wanted to outfit the wave chaser with the cannon, that would be the best time, would it not? It's going to be better to... Oh boy, how do we do this? Hmm. <clears throat> it's going to be better to reduce it and take it with us to Broken Bank. So we can take it to the wave chaser and outfit it there. I would assume so. How could you get anywhere with those spires? Right. I know, right? Which means we have to keep, uh, keep reduce on it for some time. Is the reduce able to uh, stay active long enough for us to make the journey? One minute duration. No. I was thinking we could extend the effectiveness with levitate cast it simultaneously over and over. Um, well, sorry, repeatedly over and over, but even then, the duration on it is not generous. Could we do the floating disc as we paddled? How much does the cannon weigh, Emily? I love that D&D asks these questions. Um... <laughs> Cannonballs included. <laughs> Might have to take multiple trips. <laughs> Holy fuck. It's a little heavy. I mean, you can have only one floating disc up at a time. <laughs> DM loading tip. If you really want to fluster <laughs> your DM, try and... Uh... Asking arbitrary metrics and measurements <laughs> for the dumbest things possible. And if that doesn't work, ask for random NPCs' names. Also, for uh, logistics and transporting a right, fucking cannon it? over the water. D 7,000 pounds seems like a whole lot. What? It's the floating discs. That carrying. is a whole lot. That's it's like, a little more than a whole lot. That's way more than I would assume from a cannon of that size. Cannon with Every, cannon Yeah, ball. everything. Wow. Like maybe 500 pounds? 500 pounds is the maximum carry weight of the disc. I'm I'm looking, and that's really consistent. Some of them have... I... That's the wrong... Uh, when did it open up a new tab on? This one, a six-pound brass cannon weighed approximately 1,200 pounds. And what that means with that six pounds, it fires six-pound projectiles. Yeah. I'm actually not that surprised. Uh, how much do they weigh in D&D? Because I actually do have the answer to that somewhere. Give me a second. Da, 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 da. 
<clears throat> the short answer is that it depends. At least one 17th or 18th century source suggests that cannons weighed approximately 200 times the weight of the projectile it threw. Hence, it is safe to say that an average 6-pounder weighed 1,200 pounds, and a 24-pounder weighed 4,800 pounds. This was to ensure that the gun was safe. Okay, we're gonna go... It says a medium cannon, which I'm... It looks like a medium-sized cannon uh, is 800 pounds. It's quite the predicament. This is 3.5e, a light cannon, which means medium even, size. Even reducing the size of it, it's going to, it's going to be fucking heavy. Yeah, but 800 pounds, 3.5e, like, okay, sure. They do a lot of damage. I, I need I need to I knew that. But... I need That's to a lot of damage this. to our back. I'm so glad they didn't fire that at us. Yeah, it it have been funny. Hey, while well, while they're all asking logistics questions about that and while you're looking stuff up. Do you mind if uh, Don and I continue? Oh, please. Uh, well, while they're going on about that, he's gonna make more fish tacos, trying his best not to touch the fish the entire time. Um, <laughs> that was really good. Yeah. <laughs> like, um, really good. It's... <laughs> Uh, yeah, he's going to try and make the fish tacos without touching the fish. Gonna be impossible, but he's gonna, like, grab something else to pinch the fish and put it there, like a napkin or, like, some piece of paper or something. Being that kind of stingy. Uh, what? I heard that. Okay. Um, and then he's gonna, he's gonna meander back, bringing, like, a plate of, uh, two to three tacos, I guess made the exact same as they were before. Uh, here you go. What the? Wait, when he walks through the portal, have you set the scene in any way? Oh, yeah. Um, I've, like, moved some of the stuff as if I had, like, some weird transformation happen. Like, uh, um, like, pushed aside the bed a little bit. The Like, it's no longer made, even though nobody's been in it. You know, uh, the the curtain. One of the curtains is off its rod. I've carefully removed it so it can be easily put back, right? But at a moment's glance, it looks like I have just gone ape shit in this room. <laughs> okay, and is there light on in here? Or no. There, there is no light on. Okay, where are you sitting? I am standing so that uh, wherever uh, people normally exit, I am directly behind him. Okay. <laughs> uh, so you walk into this pitch black room. Everything is all akimbo. Um, you, uh, your dark vision uh, giving you uh, brief uh, glimpses of uh, the unmade bed, the curtain torn down, the wind, the uh uh the uh the last uh little bit of sun uh barely spilling in uh creating casting these like large and uh dramatic shadows um, um you feel Brian put the plate on the bed <laughs> quietly you're gonna feel the the sharp end of a blade in your back, <laughs> like not like pushed in, but like in uh, right at the small of your back. He's gonna freeze. The plate down. <laughs> uh, he's gonna. 
he's gonna, uh, the bed's within range, right? So he doesn't have to, like, move at all? Just, all you have to do is put the plate down. Yeah, he's gonna, he's gonna do that with this, and then proceed to put his hands up immediately after. As if he's being mugged. I'm sorry, Soren. The, the wine is just too powerful. <laughs> ah! <laughs> he's gonna scream. Um, pushing into you, you realize almost immediately uh, the blade that you felt was nothing more than just a uh, uh, a uh, the sharp end of a book. <laughs> she just tackle, uh, tackles you, pretends to bite you, and just stops immediately. She's gonna scream and try and like <laughs> force his way out. Yeah, he's gonna try and force his way out. <laughs> He crawls to the uh, the other side of. Uh, he's gonna crawl to the very corner on the other side of the room and just like grab the wall and just get as far into the corner as possible. <laughs> you should see the look on your face. She's gonna turn on the light. He's gonna freeze there for a minute. Ah, uh, it's fine. It's fine. Although the fish tacos look f fucking amazing. But, no, I'm fine. I promise you, you have nothing to be worried about. You say that after you scared the living shit out of me? <laughs> what? It's a harmless prank. Yes. Harmless. Say that to my heart rate. <laughs> Didn't you not have a heartbeat? Oh. Wait, good point. <laughs> well... <laughs> the point still stands. God, why? That's it was funny. For you? Ah, just look at the stories you'll get to tell how Brian went totally feral. And she's gonna start putting back together the room. Yes. Oh boy, Not I'm so as glad. Discombobulated as as it looked in the dark. Um, it really was only just the curtain. The curtain rod was put down on the ground, and the uh, uh, and the blankets on the bed were were shuffled around. Oh yes, because I'm so happy that I haven't even been into the party for that long, and I've already gotten bitten by two people. <laughs> I didn't bite you, I pretended to bite you. Big difference. Mm, yes. Big difference. Look, you, you tried to kill me with a sword. You know, I'm still thinking about that. And he's gonna grab, <laughs> he's gonna grab his handle. I'm only kidding. You know what? If, if you want to beat me in something, beat me in target practice. We'll do it again. Next Here time we we're go. on the road. No, honestly. We'll put up little targets. We get to practice. It's awesome. Helps us be better, right? And is it the plan to get slapped by whatever we shoot again? I mean, if you shoot me, you'll get slapped. But otherwise, no. <laughs> that will be something. Anyway. I... Going back to what... what... Why? Oh, whatever. Honestly, why did, why did me and Moonzik prank a demo when we went to the bass? <laughs> Wait, were you here for that? Soren was, Dawn I wasn't. Yeah. Anyway. We pranked the Nemo, you got pranked, I'm sure I'm going to get pranked, Moonzik's going to get pranked. We just keep each other on our toes. I'm sorry if I hurt your feelings. Yeah. You better watch yourself. I might be the one to prank you. No, payback <laughs> doesn't hurt. He's gonna do the, um, the I'm watching you with the, the two fingers to the eyes. Now, thank you so much for more of my dinner. And she's going to uh, start sipping uh, more of the wine and uh, eating, her, eating her tacos. He's really He's should enjoy the wine. He's still in the corner, this by the way. <laughs> Do you want to stay? Do you want one of the tacos? 
They're delicious. Uh, they really are. No, they're all yours, but I can stay if you don't want me to leave. They're talking about, I don't know, some cannon shenanigans. They want to put it on the roof, apparently. I don't know. Put it on the ship. Please put it on the ship. It is so much infinitely more useful on the ship. You can bring that up with them later, I suppose. Apparently, I was there for when the uh, when they announced the ship was coming, right? Yeah. Yes, you were. Apparently, the your ship is coming as well tomorrow. Oh, good opportunity then. <laughs> as should... that conversation's happening, uh, Moon's uh, team is also saying to Edward, you know, while we're here, and while you have some spell slots, we should probably at least bring the cannon up and be ready to uh, have it ready to be transported tomorrow so we don't waste as much time or energy. Suppose. I suppose. Um, yeah, I'm going to warn you, I can't levitate and shrink it at the same time. Hmm. So, uh, if so you can find a other... way to 1,700 pounds, you know, a tiny, well, I mean, that divided by eight. I oh, mean, 800 pounds. If, if you levitate right. it, we can just float it, right? There, it's, it essentially weighs nothing. I can't shrink it. It won't get out of the basement hatch. And it won't get through the doors. If you can find a way to carry an object over 200 pounds, you're more than welcome to try. I think it's 100 pounds, because Sam Lee said 800. Yeah, 200 oh, divided by 8. Never mind, divided yeah. by 8. It's it's still pretty heavy, but... Sure Wait, Emily. Yeah. It's still it's still 200 pounds. 212.5. We're using the D&D &D 3.5 uh, amount for a medium cannon, which was 800 pounds. We're not we're not going to count the cannonballs because they themselves are like. We can carry them individually whenever we'd like, but. Right. You know, the cannon themselves. The cannon's going to be the big issue. Yes. Once we get it onto uh, storm. Broken Bank. I don't know why I was thinking Stormwreck. Once we get it onto Broken Bank, we should be able to handle it from there, but it's getting it to Broken Bank. That's the issue. Unless we're able to just, like, kick it in the direction Broken Bank is and hope for the best that it sails all the way there. Which, I well, know, it's not um, going to happen. If you want, I can levitate it or I can shrink it, but I can't do both simultaneously. Let's shrink it to get it out of the basement, and then we can levitate it across the water. Wouldn't wheeling this giant heavy thing across the floor damage the floorboards? You think that you're probably fine. Because I don't want to deal with it. I think <laughs> this is probably fine. Uh, might scuff the wood a little bit, but we can we can work that out if it happens. Well, I guess I should uh probably go down there. Mm. Actually, does a reduced object work inside of handy haversack or you know any kind of um, interdimensional space like that? I don't think mm -hmm. it, I still think it's too big to fit. Not when it's reduced. How long does reduce last? One minute? One minute. I can haul ass up the ladder after it's reduced put it, and put it in the handy haversack and then throw it out. No, honestly, I'm going to say this right now. We only need to get it out of the building through the doors. And then after that, we can levitate it wherever we want. Right. It's just the getting it out of the building part that's the difficult part. Are they down in the uh, room? I actually Are have you... a... I thought they're still at the day the table. I thought they were still at the table too. But are you guys down in the room I at this point? I imagine, like at this point, uh, Hiri and Windchime have shoot us out of the room because we're boring <laughs> them. So we're on our way over to the cannon, actually talking about this the whole time. I do have a question. Does sound travel through the barrier? 
We did talk oh, about bubbles. that, yes. Does. What if we knocked out the wall? The wall? I'll... Sorry, will you plant the rose? I just... Just give me a second. I... I have an idea. I suppose... Uh, he's gonna plant the rose. And just hang there. So, uh, she's just gonna pop through. How far do you think this wall is from the, uh... And she's just, like, tapping on the cellar wall. From the, uh, cliffside. First off, what happened to your mouth? What? Oh. <laughs> I played a prank on Zoran. He thinks the, uh, wine makes you a cannibal. What? I guess it's technically pro possible, but pretty improbable. Wine makes you cannibals. Where does something? He, he said that. that explains why he, he said that. Wine you wine said. Beard. He said that. You said that. I did not say anything of that nature. Do you think I would say something so unacademic in any capacity? With I do think I do think you have overcomplicated it, and that is technically a possibility. Well, I would like to say that I, it, myself, did not actually say that any uh, faults of interpretation would entirely put the blame on anyway, Soren over there. So, logistically you're, you're... speaking, we're saying that you want to bust out the wall to over here? So, yeah. just you'd, for clarification. You'd look at over the lagoon. That's where, that's where the door is. No. No? No, actually? that's the other side. Um, I will show you the cellar. Of course, I haven't redone this yet, but uh, technically this crack right here uh, is thin enough that you could see through it, remember? Um, into the lagoon area. Um, There's a lagoon over here. We busted through the wall, made sure it was stable. We actually have a fairly decent, like, miniature port, and it would help us get heavy objects like this out in the future. I suppose so. I was thinking we'd probably put a padding through this. I mean, this is the first room that we make it to once we plant the rose. You know, assuming we have to bring an injured person behind with us, or something, we should probably put something... You no know, measures in place for at least equipment, weapons, maybe like a medical station to treat people without having them carry the burden of going up the ladder. Well, I mean, this if we just get this out into the lagoon, I mean, yes, we lose a little bit of, uh, we'd lose a little bit of the secrecy of it, but we'd gain some really powerful, uh, ability to, you know, uh, get stuff out. Bring people up the side into the kitchen door. I think we should put a logistical overhaul in the basement to accommodate yeah. for the fact that it's now a hub for what is essentially a fast track, two way fast track system. Right? I mean, and the lagoon could be made fairly defensible. I mean, look, both sides of the uh, lagoon are uh, have the cliff side. If we're really worried about the attack, we could mount the fences along them. This could make this whole, uh, a kind of miniature porter area. I know it's not very deep, but uh, it's good for our smaller boats. That's true, I suppose. Soren, overhearing that, you have a sudden thought. Horses! Nay. I just wanted to let you know, you do with that information, Will, you can hear the conversation that's happening, though, and communicate with them. Yeah, um, that is true, but he's just kind of dangling there. To be honest, he's in his own head at the moment, kind of in his own head, hanging out with Freya. He, he doesn't really have, he doesn't really care about this, to be honest. What is any heavy objects, maybe even animals? You could just get it through here. Hmm. 
possible that we could keep our our horses down here then when we don't need them. Didn't even think of that, but yeah. It'd be a nice little area for them to roam around. It doesn't help us with our cannon problem right now, but it might help us with cannon problem in the future. talking about busting a hole in this to get outside, it's going to take quite an effort. I'm not sure if we can get it outside tonight. Wait a second. Alright, hear me out. I can see out there. Yeah. Reduce the cannon and hand it to me. If you can lift this, uh, 200 pound cannon, you're more than free to do so. You just need to get cannon. it. Okay, well, uh, I'm gonna cast Reduce on <sighs> the cannon. Bryna is going to attempt- she's basically picking it up. All she has to do is be holding it. Yeah, um, you are a skilled adventurer, even with your sh shitty strength score, you can hold 100 pounds, uh, especially if you set your other shit down. Um, yeah. So yeah, you can hold this, this cannon. Oh god, this is heavy. Alright, and, and I'm gonna teleport uh, out uh, into the... Uh, uh, out through the crack that I can see through. Uh oh, on to land if I can. If I can see water, I will still teleport into water. My move speed is better in water, so I'd argue that I could probably carry the same same amount in water. Yeah, you can you can get to here easily. So I teleport out holding the cannon. You do so. Oh god. The cannon's out! Well, that's all we needed. Uh, I'm going to run upstairs, and I'm going to cast Levitate on that cannon. Levitate's 10-minute duration, so we can basically load it wherever we want. Now, we just got to go deliver this down to uh, at least the port, I think. Maybe we should... Were you, you two know, within five feet of me? We about giving it to the ship for the wave chasing. They were I within mean... five feet of you when you disappeared. Make wisdom saving throws. What? Oh yeah, right, uh, she can frighten anyone she teleports near. Sorry, teleports out of everybody standing Is that a may or is that a must? I don't actually I mean, you know. You gotta read it, it's your skill. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh... I would say, uh, wind chime. Uh, you and Nahiri are currently it's in of the my kitchen. my choice, so I wouldn't choose. Uh, you know, and Nahiri are currently in the kitchen, I presume, putting away the leftovers and whatnot, um, mm -hmm. if there are any. Um, and you see Brian pop into existence holding a, uh, a small cannon, um, outside mm -hmm. of these windows. Wind chimes. Screams. <laughs> oh my god, you scared me! You can hear that, it's not that far. The windows are open, it's a nice evening. Hello! Sorry, Hi! I'm... What, what are you doing? Um... Do you think I can do that? Oh, yeah, of course. <laughs> what else would it be? <laughs> that's that's the one we're going to put on the, the pirate ship? Yeah. Well, not the pirate ship, merchant ship, but yeah. The, 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 the ship that is not the pirate ship. <laughs> Ooh, it's gonna be so cool. Oh my gosh, Nahuri, we can we can shoot cannonballs off of the ship. I can't wait to show you that. I so cannot wait to see the ship. 
all of this talk, like, I'm jealous. Oh, you're gonna love it. It's so great. <laughs> like, and, like, on the open water, it, it feels so free. I love it so much. I've never been on a ship before. Really? Really? During this conversation, Moonzik like steps outside and he's like, uh, and he overhears the conversation. He says, just wait until Bor sees this thing. He's going to go ballistic over it. <laughs> uh, I get it. Ballistic? <laughs> Already has a ballista. We're just really upgrading the firepower. Still, he's going to be very happy to see this thing either way. The problem is it's going to take more than a day to install. Well, We're going to have to employ somebody to put in the turning mechanism on the ship. We got to make sure that it's, you know, that the uh, the cannon itself is, you know, anchored in place so it doesn't roll about the ship. Yeah. But... Have we managed to convert any more of those uh, jumps into the right amount of gold nearby? I... Uh, this one is uh, at... Um... Janor. Who we've tasked with financing um, this place. It's only been a few days, I'll be honest. I haven't even left the island. Alright, well... There was a pawn shop, I believe, over on the islands. They could probably buy it. Or buy some of the yeah. gems for some money. We'll figure out something. We need to figure out a efficient way of doing this. A jeweler should be able to pay what they're worth. You know, given that they make jewelry that improves the value of the gems. Well, there was a jeweler back so. in Port Zoon that we could go see tomorrow. I probably shouldn't put my faith in there, considering I told them I sold my family assets to get the money I, I have now, so... Isn't that also rather close to the Sevilla estate? I mean, he took my I would word say that it's... Not close enough to warrant immediate suspicion, and that any long-term consequences would most likely out, you know, the 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 at least the uh, consequences of any prolonged long-term actions would likely occur post, you know, collapse of the Sophia family for them to be able to pursue that lead. Assuming you know Sophia family collapses. Well. Either way, we'll, we'll figure something out. We'll have to pay the outfitters there, so... This conversation taking place meanwhile we're walking our cannon out to the front of the island. Yep. So, this yep. is actually a really good question. Um, nope. Well, I mean... I would venture to say that the cannon wouldn't fit through a single, like, one door. It would have I, to be I, a double I door. I, 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 I mean, weren't we going to levitate it and, like, take it around? Oh, wow. I thought I thought there was a, uh, a patch of grass between here, because... Wasn't there? Maybe at some point. All right. Um, but, I mean, same thing could be done over water if somebody wanted to go swimming. I can go swimming. I can't levitate it, but I can go swimming. I can levitate it outside and you can swim with it in the water. It doesn't matter. Sounds reasonable. All right. Would you like me to levitate it? Please. I'm going to poke it and it's going to start floating. Oh, you are going to have to be within 60 feet of this. Which means you will also have to be swimming. Uh, no, I think I can, it, I just have to be within 60 feet during the activation, but I can go any distance away from it. And as long as I'm holding concentration, the object stays afloat. Um, 
The duration is 10 minutes, so I don't know how far Brian can get with 10 minutes of swim speed. She can get all the way around the island. Get all the way around. Yep. Even dragging. Well, yeah. Post it. Post the spell description into chat, Rocky. But yeah. Yep. On it. Uh, target that weighs up to five hundred pounds is a problem. Pounds. Well, technically speaking, the reduce effect was on it, so it is worth. It is weighing less than five hundred pounds at the time that the spell's effect is cast, and after it resolves, it's simultaneously oh, more than five hundred pounds. I okay. As a DM, I would say no to that. <laughs> Oh, this is like yeah, magic healing slang. Yeah, no, uh, to uh, absolutely enlarge reduces concentration. In order to cast a new spell, you have to drop concentration. So, even if it happens instantaneously, you have to drop concentration in order to cast it again. How far up are those uh, mountains? Uh, this one, I believe, is the tallest one. This is, yeah. Um, you could probably climb your up your way up. This this one here is 15. Uh, if, we, if we just levitate it up and just climb our way over and climb our way back down, it shouldn't can't be levi it Can't it's levitate it because it's 800 pounds. No, like, technically, the thing weighs oh, more. Oh, right. right. It's eight, yeah, it weighs That's 800 pounds. Problem. Yeah, so, um... You know what? Reduce it again. You and me, Moonzik. And, uh... We're going to attempt to, uh... Together, just throw it up to here. Okay. Nope. The, uh... 15 the, feet up. It, for With the both of you... Um, one person can roll strength at advantage. A strength, uh, saving? No. Athletics Just, uh, advantage. Athletics, athletics check I have another at idea, advantage. actually. What if we both climbed up there, used the grappling hook that we just acquired so it climbs onto the cannon, and we pull it up when it's reduced? Yeah. 100 pounds between the both of us shouldn't be too big of a deal to pull it up, and then we just get it over the mountain, and we're done. All right, here, sketchy Who's grappling the hook. Or enlarge and reduce, by the way. What? Oh, I just popped the other relevant spell into okay. the chat. As you pull, as you as you kind of reach in, uh. Reach into the back folding, is it? Uh, yeah. It's okay. It's in the handy haversack. That makes more sense. Uh, as you reach into the handy app haversack, uh, you can hear the movement of the the snapping of the uh, grappling hook. That's grappling hook. Behave! Don't hurt us. <laughs> I'd like to like grab a hold of the furthest end of the rope as I can from the hook itself and like pull it out and then just immediately start spinning it uh, so it doesn't have any chance of like grabbing onto me. Okay. Um, I suppose uh, you need to make a dexterity saving throw. Hopefully that gave me a oh. uh, lower DC. Doesn't matter. 22. <laughs> yeah, you're able to uh, shove your hand in and pull out quickly uh, the grappling hook, uh, starting spinning it above your head. Um, all the That's while, funny. you hear the snapping of the uh, uh, <laughs> uh, of the hook in the air. The claws. I'm standing next um, to him. <laughs> you're fine. He stepped away. He knew what he was doing. Okay. With, with that. Um, the, uh, <laughs> having it, uh, swinging above your head, um, I need you to, uh, to make me a strength check. Strength check. Athletics, if you want. Like, as To throw he, the grappling hook. Yep, as he does this, he's going to call out to Edward, now, if it's not already reduced. 
He, it's yeah, he, he did it. Right about the same time. Nine? Nine. That does not succeed. He's gonna pull you can it pull it back and try again. Yep. Pull it back. Keeping track of this, by the way. Can I just take the grappling hook and catapult it? That's true, too. All right. Does if you would like, you can. Does catapult break I'm going to catapult the grappling <laughs> <laughs> uh, catapult does not break concentration. It's not a nope, concentration spell. it's not concentration. Oh, go for it then, yeah. Which, by the way, you can levitate like an object 500 pounds heavy and then you can catapult it at someone probably. And the DM <laughs> would allow it to drop concentration as it's hitting the target. Oh my god, that would fucking what? hurt. Yep. Um, I'm that being just said, saying. you have to, is there a roll to hit? Yes, there is a roll to hit. With it's a dex the... save by the target. A dex save. Well, it doesn't. It doesn't no dex have a. It doesn't dex. So you, uh, you, uh, he throws it above his head, and you see clearly that it is going to miss. And with a quick uh, flick of your uh, of your of your wrist and your finger, um, it uh, instantly changes directions and uh, attaches itself uh, directly onto the uh, um, to the cannon, and it grabs a hold. Look at that! You see old hooky new the. Window. It it uh, it looks like it's gnawing on it. It doesn't seem to be doing any damage, but <laughs> like it's eating. Reading through this, I feel like we got scammed. We, that fifty percent chance that it got, gets detached is really fucking bad. That's if it weighs crazy. more than five hundred. Oh. That's it, if it weighs more than five hundred. There's more than weight. Okay. So we're we're good. It is currently reduced. All right, let's pull it up. Let's do this. And uh, the two of you together are able to uh, pull up the uh, uh, the the reduced cannon. Now let's go quick before before it uh, reduce wears off. Um, drag. And uh, Chim is going to gingerly put the hook back into Haversack with the grappling hook first, so it like sinks into the into the space. Okay, so uh, go ahead and you can either do a, uh, a de another deck save, or I can allow you to make an animal handling check. Dex check or deck save. Uh, deck save or a animal handling check, dex, either or. Dex yeah, save deck save. Better. He's a rogue. Come on. And uh, you are just barely able to uh, um, to get the uh, uh, the grappling hook into the into the bag. Oh. Mostly by uh, the, the your quick hands of. Uh, uh, grabbing it right at its base while it was still attached to the, uh, um... Brian has grabbed the can and is running. She's not looking back. <laughs> okay. As, uh... Hold on, wait as for you... me! <laughs> as the two of you, uh, successfully... I, I do toss the cannon or gingerly set it down the other side. I'll, I'll set it down. I don't need to fuck with uh, the rules of the universe. Yeah. Um, as you guys kind of pass it back and forth uh, to each other and get it down uh, the side of the the spire. This has better be worth it. I think it will be. Let's get it over to the dock, and that way. <laughs> We're that much closer to, you know, getting it too broken. I wouldn't have to load it onto the ship. The original levitate plan won't work. It's going to be a hard day of paddling with the ship. Oh, yes. We can always get them to move the ship to us. That's impossible. No, we can Still haven't figured out the spiders, my dude. We could. Never mind. Um, as uh, you uh, make good work on uh, getting uh, 
eventually using levitate to get the uh, um, the cannon all the way to the dock. All right. Hmm. How far can you catapult something, Edward? Has to be less than five like, pounds, um, right? Uh, it depends on the context of the question. Technically speaking, the <sighs> absolute maximum range of something I can catapult would be 150 feet. But if we're talking about an object that I, you know, how far I could actually move the object, that would be 90. Hmm. Um, you do looking out across the, uh, uh, the ever darkening water uh as night approaches um the uh it, you have a realization that it does take approximately two hours by paddle boat you yeah i don't think we would make it i can't keep something shrunk that long and obviously, if we keep it on the boat, the boat's going to go down under. And we can't levitate it for that long. Yep. Yeah. Best option is, is we put it in a pocket dimension and carry that. We don't have a but I don't know if we can carry, have anything that would, pounds, you know. Though. If we attempt to, it's going to destroy it. What do you supposed to do? Otherwise, the other possible thing I could think of is you're going to kill me for saying this. We bring it back to the cellar and we meet them in Nicodranas and give it to them there. Nope, not happening. We're we've already committed to this bit. I knew you were going to say that, but it was. We just put it on the on the paddle boat and we paddle our might out. It can it already was... hold us. It can hold all of us in all of our armor, capably not even low in the water. If we have two people on it and we just have them paddle really hard, yes, it'll be a hard day's work, but we'll get there and it won't be too low. But 800 pounds? Is, is the ship... How much do you... How much do you think each of us weighs with all of our armor and weapons on us? I suppose you have a point, but... Still, that is, like, going to be double the weight of that. No, it's not. Windchime alone in her half plate is probably close to 300 pounds. I'm pushing 150 with my... Uh, with the Serpent Scale Mail, actually. Probably closer to 180. Is there a way that we can test this first before we commit to something? We have the we have the paddle boat at the dock, right? That's how they're able yep. to get back and forth. You did leave it here, yep. Actually, my math was way off with the scale marrow. Brian would be closer to two hundred. Scale was like forty-five pounds, is it not? Regardless, I do want to try this. So, just so you know. The paddle boat, we've discussed this before, can hold four medium creatures comfortably. It's ten feet long, four feet wide, two feet deep. Yep. We're gonna try and load that. I'm thinking it takes up the space of about four creatures. I have a terrible feeling it's going to sink. 
I mean, it's a boat in a box. We can always just deactivate it and bring it back up. DM loading tip. This is something... <laughs> This is definitely something that's bigger. That's what I was saying. Sorry. Um, this was all Edward's fault for mentioning something about the cannon. <laughs> what? Uh, you so you you pull out the the uh, the folding boat uh, and uh, are able to get the uh, the cannon onto it. Once uh, fingers crossed, uh, the concentration is dropped on uh on reduce uh you quickly have a realization that the folding boat is about exactly at what it can what it can hold 800 pounds and you don't think that there that the boat would be able to hold up another person but it is holding how far is it from here to barkham deck two hours Two hours by paddle boat. By paddle boat, which has a speed of? Are you suggesting we swim the entire way? Not uh, suggesting you do. Are you able to push the whole thing by yourself? So the entire distance is six miles. At three miles an hour. <sighs> Just to bring this up, which I know I'm not probably not supposed to do, I do have boots of flying that allow me to fly for four hours. That's. Hmm. But you'd be also dragging behind 800 pounds. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or pushing. Or pulling. Actually. Uh, or pushing, yeah. no. At three m I could get there in uh you said it took two, two hours at that? With put uh, with pushing and dragging three, rules. Three yeah, so with the pushing and dragging dragging rules as my at my current speed, I could get there in uh three hours. You can travel uh, two, That's without two, dashing. Two miles, excuse me, six miles in three hours. Uh, so, uh, so 40, I have a swim speed of 40. Um, pushing and dragging rules puts that down to 20. 20 feet per uh, six seconds is uh, 2.27 2 miles per hour. Um, so three and two, uh, with three hour, with a, uh, three miles per hour, it took two hours, so we just switched those two numbers because, uh, of how those numbers work. It takes me about three hours. It's not a precise, but it's pretty close. And that's without any dashing, which means I wouldn't even ex suffer exhaustion from that. That's travel speed. There's no way you wouldn't uh, suffer exhaustion. I'm telling you that. Hypo like, sure, what's you can look at what the rule said. Having, I'm, what's what the I'm, use of me having a swim speed? I understand, but there is a very, very big difference between swimming and swimming on open ocean. Not to mention swimming on ocean open carrying 800 pounds. Not carrying. I'm pushing, I'm pushing a boat that is meant to go through the water, so that is a very big difference. I, I'm and telling I you, I have a magical ability. You, can, this. you absolutely can do this, but there's no way you're not going to suffer suffer exhaustion levels. I, I figured. Up, I figured there would be issues involved, and those might cost me exhaustion, but the straight up swim speed would not. 
with the rules. I hear what you're saying. I know what you're saying. I completely understand by the rules at whatever. But in this scenario, it makes no sense why you wouldn't suffer exhaustion levels. And I'm not going to, like, fluctuate on that. You still can do it. I'm telling you, you can give this a try. But you're, you, six miles, swim speed or not, magic or not, pulling 800 pounds. Sure, it's on a boat and sure it's through water. On open ocean. By yourself. Swimming is... By yourself. Swimming is easier for Brian than walking. I understand. You wouldn't be able to do this walking on with a cart. Yeah, that's fair. If we, like, if you get as many people as you can, we can help. I just... Six miles is gonna be hard for anybody who doesn't have a swimming uh, Yeah, team. yeah, you guys, you guys would have a lot of trouble keeping up with me. Soren can. Soren can keep up with me. How can Soren keep up with you? He's, He's got a fly speed for four hours. Oh, yeah. With the fly speed, yes. Look, it will be difficult, but I'll make it there. What I need is I need support from Soren flying behind me, making sure any nasties don't change things, and maybe taking the toll every once in a while. He will pass him a rope and he can fly in front. Give me a little bit of a break. I suppose. It's worth looking into. I think we can do this. Could we possibly Trust cast me. levitate on the boat to make it glide a little bit easier? Not a chance. Boat's heavier than the, uh, well, boat might be lighter, but it wouldn't help with the, uh, the cannon. cannon on it. It's worth a thought, I guess. So we have an idea. So we got it on the boat. That's the big thing. So we can get things... Ready for tomorrow, then. Edward, I have one more thing for you. Yes? Can you still cast sending for, for today? Yes. I'd like you to send a message to, 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 uh, to Jarkel to let everybody know that we have a present for them. Don't say what it is. I want it to be a surprise. Where should I tell them to go? Um, that's a good question. Broken Bank Port. Yeah, they're going to be there anyway. Yes, I will deliver. They're going to be completely flabbergasted. I can't wait to see their faces. Alright, uh, I'm going to cast Sending. And, uh, well, I mean, the spell for sending already specifies that they know who I am, blah, blah, yep. blah. Yep. Um, meet us at Broken Bank Port tomorrow. We have a gift for you. And send. That's it? Eleven words? Oh, fair enough. There is more words. Um. You can say more, I'm just not... Uh, the party is eager to see you. After all this time, uh... I don't know what else to say. You can leave it there, that's much closer, that's only three away. <laughs> yeah. Um... Um... You hear, uh, DeSharko's voice. Oh, um, it's great to hear from you. We will meet you at Broken Bank tomorrow. Happy to hear your voice.
you. Um, well, they're going to meet us at Broken Bank tomorrow. Uh, yeah, from what I've heard, the Jackal is eager to see us. All of that. I have to go eat more things. If I, uh, if I lose energy out there. Oh, that's true. And plus, you two probably want more alone time with your silly book. Mm. Yes, absolutely. Most definitely, <laughs> without a doubt in my mind. You said that a little too eagerly, Edward, for what I was implying. Yes, he always I'm wants familiar. alone time, don't worry. It, it's good literature. Right. It's truly riveting stuff. Um, I will... If you don't mind, I will take this book down to the... At least where I can find magic inks and paper. Yeah, I have to go talk to Sora and get him up to date on the plan. Well then, we'll... I don't know how much of the tacos is left, but um, we'll definitely uh, get comfortable then and settle down for the evening. Um, uh... First things first, let's get the cannon out of the boat. Last thing we want is a freak storm coming and downing this. The weather's not fair. We can't make this trip. Uh, I suppose you have a fair point. You're welcome. And all three of us, can we just drag it ashore instead of uh yeah absolutely instead of taking, all right like drag the boat ashore instead of taking the cannon out of the boat yeah yeah and then tie it make sure this is not going anywhere if a freak storm rolls in absolutely Wunderbar. Wunderbar. Um, you do that, and the but with the boat secure and already uh, worn out from the day's activities, you make your way uh, back to the island. Soren, mm -hmm. um, you are currently on uh, the other end of. Uh, um, are you planning on staying here? Well, Brahm's going to pop out to let him know what the plan is. He's just, quote-unquote, hanging around. Um, then what do you mean, staying there? Somebody's got to stay on this side. That is true. Um, he pops out. You have an o option to get up, uh, to go back to your room. Oh, for the night? Yeah. Hey, you're back. What exactly was going on? I heard a, lo a bunch of talking. Portal. Well, um, we figured out the way to get the cannon onto the boat, but uh, nobody else can get onto our folding boat with the cannon on it. It's a little weird. I thought we'd be able to get at least one person. But because we can't paddle it, I'm going to swim with it. Oh, that that sounds like a lot. It is. I'm going to need your help because you can fly. Of We're course. the only ones who can, you know, get across to Broken Bank with this. And, uh, well, I don't, I might be able to do it on my own, but I don't want to risk it. Yeah, I'll do whatever I can to help. Um, somebody has to stay here, though. We can't both just leave unless somebody else is here. Stay here. <sighs> if you want to go back to your room, I mean, 
both of us have a uh, pretty big day ahead. I mean, I don't mind saying. I mean, if you want some alone time, I can definitely leave. Otherwise, I'm here. To be honest, I think I'd prefer not to be alone. It gives me too much time in my own head. Plus, I'm afraid... Uh... Well... Last thing I want to do is have a dream in which I piss somebody off and all of a sudden I can't swim. Oh, that doesn't sound fun. Yeah, just let me go grab some things and I'll be right back. Um, she's going, uh, he's going to, uh... I guess, I don't know exactly how he'd unplant the flower, but he'd unplant the flower, uh, hand it over to Brian. And Brian will plant the flower via mage hand. And um, he'll unplant the flower via watering it. Yeah, I could also destroy water. Uh, he's going to, um... He's going to cannonball in and just kind of grab some stuff. Some extra food and whatnot. Just extra supplies so we can spend the night there you uh as you come through you see uh winch time and here he's still in the kitchen um wind chime you see soren coming um up from the uh the basement after seeing uh brian go down there um mm -hmm. um I, are you feeling better, Sora? Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm feeling better. I mean, I wasn't really feeling all that off anyway. Oh, uh, yeah. I was a little worried, though. You have... You don't have to worry. The tacos were delicious. There was nothing wrong with them. I think. <laughs> uh... No, no, I didn't mean it like that. I was referring to something else. Anyway, you guys really did clean up um i could have helped you guys you didn't no, have to do it alone done. it's all done now so okay uh i'm just grabbing some things me and brian are gonna spend the night at the um the in the room yeah so if if you need us we'll be we'll be at the the room i think we're leaving the portal open overnight right uh I don't no, know. Maybe you cannot do that. You okay? No. I heard Brian talk about that before. Ah, fair enough. Okay, we'll be over there. We won't be able to okay. let you in until tomorrow morning, though. That's fine. We'll probably be co more comfy over here. Yeah, we will. Check out <laughs> our new digs. Yeah, we can set it up a little bit more. All right. Um, you guys. You guys put everything away, right? Was there any leftovers we can take? Yeah, yeah, they're in a, a little box here. Do you want Do you want me to make you some? Uh, you don't have to make it. We'll, we'll just take it back and make it while we're over there. Okay, yeah, here you go. Uh, she Thanks. gets some from the cooler and gives it to you. Uh, he's gonna make just, like, one or two trips of everything. Get Making sure we got food... We got comfortable stuff and whatnot, just everything we need for the night. Okay. Um, Lily, I did send you a message, by the way. You did? I did. On where? On roll 20. <laughs> uh -huh. Just thought that might help as a oh, friendly yeah. reminder. Yeah, I know that. I don't have it prepared. Can I do, like, the... Well, you're getting ready to take a long rest. Oh, yeah, okay. Cool. So um, you can you can do that on your long rest. Yes. I don't think anyone was... Yeah, I'm... Windchime isn't in the loop with what they're doing with the cannon, though. Say, if it's okay, Brian, when you walked through, did you tell Windchime? Yeah. Okay. So yeah, you know. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um. 
Yeah, I'll prepare it for tomorrow. Okay. 